Namaste, namaste, everybody. I can project my voice, so <laughs> no my uh, On behalf of the Cosmic Center Spiritual Light, my name is Sharon Elizabeth, also known as Baba Sharon, and we welcome you here for a very, very second, exciting, very exciting uh, uh, sharing uh, a new frequency on the planet. I have to give a little background first you know how this all was designed and you know every all of us are on a frequency band and those for us that have eyes to see and ears to hear and so what happened and we just talked about the how this uh, uh, divinely orchestrated different people playing a role how this all came together but I just want to share about oh my gosh my age 40 years ago or so uh, I was impressed with the idea is that if we can raise the frequency of the planet high enough, divine intervention, our greater family of light can have more access to make that connection to assist humanity in the ascension process and also take care of a lot of stuff like our uh, the pollution and all the things that are going on. So that's one of the reasons why I kept on showing up, as many of us has, because we have this higher vision for our planet. So just real quick, uh, I was introduced to Ken Lloyd uh, through a mutual friend. She said to me, this you have to make a connection with him. He's a walk-in. Now I hear a lot of things. I've been doing here for 11 years, the Cosmic Center of Spiritual Light, and we have been cosmic way ahead of time. Um, and so it's very important that through this we are discerning. But I will say this, when I made connection with Ken, it was like instant. I knew immediately. I knew immediately. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is from 40 years ago. They said that this could happen. And so all I'm going to share, most of you have looked on the splash that. You can read all of that stuff. Okay, all I'm here to say, I've asked him to come back again. We want to share this out into the world. And we want to absolutely know that we have the opportunity to be in our wholeness and fullness. Mm -hmm. I am a different person physically, mentally, and emotionally. You know, I could say I'm back in my 50s. So thank you so much for that personally. So without further ado, I do want to introduce you to Ken Lloyd. <laughs> thank you. So, you know, thank you for having me back. I'm excited to be back and I'm excited to bring some more energy, um, some more technology with what I'm doing. Uh, but before I begin, I'm just curious, could anybody raise your hands if they had the, the previous lecture here? I'm just curious if there's a lot of folks or if there's some new folks. Okay, wonderful. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about the walk-in experience and kind of what led up to it. But really what I want to do is I want to focus on the things that I'm seeing while I'm doing the healing. Uh, and some of the, the techniques that I use to get the results that I do. And then we're going to follow that up with questions and answers. And if there's things you want to know, uh, maybe about you, maybe not too much. But we'll see if we can tap in and we'll see what, uh, you know, Spirit has to say or whatever the general questions are. Said, um, as she says, a walk-in is a soul replacement. Um, in my case, I actually have kind of two souls in me. They're both me. Sounds complicated. A typical walk-in is when somebody has a near-death experience and they have, uh, they actually die and there's a two-minute window where another soul can come in. And it's a completely different soul. And when they come in, there's a lot of trauma. You know, they don't recognize the partner. They don't recognize the children. They don't recognize the job. And what they do do, what they do recognize is the trauma. Um, that soul is here to have that earthly experience that they couldn't have. And they're kind of shortcutting it. You know, they're not going through the birth cycle and the childhood. They're literally jumping right in the middle of it. And they're, they're really kind of in a lot of hot water because they really don't know how to handle the 3D earthly experience. So, so that's the, the traumatic one. Um, that didn't happen to me. Uh, my walk-in experience uh, was about four and a half years ago. Um, I'm a three-time entrepreneur. Um, I've created three cybersecurity companies, and I sold all of them. And it was during the last acquisition that my situation happened. Um, it, it wasn't a good time. You know, uh, not a lot of sleep, a lot of you know, ADHD medicines, an amazing amount of energy drinks, and such incredible stress. I ended up with a pituitary tumor. 
uh, which when they removed it says, hey, this is made of cortisol. It is all cortisol. So apparently I'm on the books in the University of Miami for something very fun and unique. But that being said, the, the walk-in experience happened because I was under so much stress and every day I'm like, just make it stop and make it stop. And, and I did mean make life stop. I, at the time, I met, make the acquisition stop because it was so stressful, the whole process, right? I think I've had enough. Well, my walk-in experience was uneventful. For three weeks, I had my deceased relatives talking to me, which I thought was the coolest thing in the world. Like, I'm asking them questions about my other relatives, and who are you watching over, and what are they, what's going on? But I didn't ask any like, life-changing questions, like, what's going on up there, or, or anything like that. So it happened for three weeks. And it was, it was two different relatives, which was really interesting, because I hadn't met the one, which was my wife's father who had deceased, and I had never really met him. But I knew it was him. I, I heard about his reputation, and he came through pretty stern. With, with that being said, I'm laying in bed one day, and I've got my fist clenched, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in a lot, of, a lot of anguish, if you will. And my back arched up, and for a minute and a half, I was locked in this pose, and I felt something come out of my body. Now, I remember that. but. I, I don't know at that time what was going on. You know, I just rolled over, went to sleep, woke up, and my deceased relative stopped talking to me. Could never understand that why. Understand why that happened. Well, just to fast forward, what was really happening is they were preparing me to die. You know, we, we talk about people who see other relatives right before they pass. But I apparently had a choice. And of course, this wasn't a choice I recognized, but what happened here is a part of me left, like not all of me, just a part of me left. Well, let's just call it the trauma part of me left. And another version of me came in, and this version was a technology person, which you know kind of makes sense. I'm a technology guy, right? But it was an ele elevated higher self, several versions up and several versions over. And, and I say that because this version of me is now almost 100% integrated four and a half years later meaning that they are getting ready to flick the switch and turn on that next big thing in me. And I know I'm here today to talk about healing, but there's a lot of other things that I've, I've got on the table that they're, they're telling me and showing me, but they just give me a little bit. So that being said, I had the walk-in experience, woke up the next day, and, and I didn't have any, any real recollection of what took place. But I did know they stopped talking to me. And so I'm like, listen, if I can do this once, I can do it again. And how do I do it? So I located psychics to tell me, hey, what happened? And, and not a lot of them gave me information, excuse me, gave me much information about what took place, just little bits and pieces. And you know, I'd ask questions like, how old am I going to be? And do I have gifts? You know, the, the really fun, basic psychic questions. And I always got a little bit of information. But then I started reading about the different gifts and how to turn them on and realize that, hey, I had to, to detox. I had to get off of the ADHD medicine, first of all. I had to stop with the energy drinks. And then I had to kind of clean my body out of all those poisons I had put in over the years. And I mean, a long, long, long time. And then, you know, I, I, I'd done that process. And then I located other people who, you know, didn't do readings, but they taught you how to do this. So the books were one thing. You can read about intuition or read somebody's aura, which I still can't see auras. but. <laughs> You, you read about these things, but then it's different when you pay someone money to then teach you. Every, every, every you know, an hour or two a week, you're on the call and they're, they're teaching you this. And I thought that was amazing. But I didn't really have the confidence because I'm like, listen, I'm paying this, this person to teach me to do these things and she's telling me I'm doing them, remote viewing as an example, jumping to other universes, going up in space and watching ETs come by and things like that. I'm like, okay. This is great imagination. I'd never had imagination before. You, you turned on the imagination and that was that. But then I had some opportunities to do some healing with some of the training. And again, I'm thinking it's my imagination, my visualization, it's, it's rocking and rolling until I started getting the responses from the people I was touching. And it was validation that something really is happening. Still didn't quite believe it, in fact. Um, I ended up doing plant medicine once, um, totally afraid of it. Like, this, this, this is not what I do, but I, I spent weeks preparing, eating correctly, just psyching myself out. I'm like, oh God, I'm getting ready to do this thing. And, and I heard all these horror stories, like, listen, you're gonna have a great night, or you're gonna have a really, really, really <laughs> bad night you're never gonna forget, and you know, you're gonna wake up crying. But it, it was amazing. So. I, I did the plant, the plant medicine once, and 
the only thing I asked is, you know, let me know if I've, I don't remember the exact question, but let me know if I've got something coming on or what was blocking me from doing this. And literally the, the, the only thing I remember is, is you. You're the one blocking this from happening. So it was, it was my confidence that was the block for me going forward. So I did that. And then I took some course, some other courses on how to do healing, the kind of healing I'm doing now. Different, it was more, more basic, if you will, kind of the foundations of stuff. And I get through the course and I realize I just did everything that they were telling me to do. You know, without hesitation and without anything, I'm like, this is, again, validation. So now I can see inside of people's body and I can see the energies and I can move them around and, and I'm kind of doing it with intent, meaning that I would see the body and I would see something in the shoulder and I would move the shoulder around or whatever. And, and again, that was with the brain and with intent. And the reason I bring that up is because, as I mentioned, they're, they're turning me on and they're turning me on more and more and more. And now they've taught me to do this without the brain at all. The heart just does it. I'm literally just, as I tell you in my one-on-one -on -one sessions, a baseball announcer. And I just set the intent to do this. And I, I, I've been doing it with my eyes open today. It's, they, they're making me do it with my eyes open now um, on how to do this stuff. And it's all energy work. And, you know, in the sessions, in the sessions, the results are happening. Um, it, it, it's hard to um, recognize how much I've grown, grown in the last year and a half with the healing to what I'm doing now. And again, I'm just, just baby steps. No, that being said, um, I'm multidimensional, meaning that I have access to a lot of different energies than just a traditional healing. Um, all the different places I've had in all the past lives, I have all that experience that I'm able to draw on and bring them through in all the sessions. And, and I don't know why I'm doing it, right? It's, it's just it's just kind of like I'm an open channel. I have portals in the solar plexus from different places where all the energies just flow through as they need to flow through, um, which you know, is wonderful because I honestly, I can't remember much. It just all happens. So the, the thing I did want to talk about tonight, which is a little different than last time, is some of the things that I've been seeing in my sessions and some of the things that have changed. Previously, you know, a year ago when I'm doing the sessions, I noticed I, I wasn't getting the results that I was hoping for, which is kind of sad. I'm like, you know, I put all this energy into the work and, and they're all into it, but we're not, we're not seem to be getting the results. Um, so I looked deeper into it and started asking some more questions. And one of the things that comes up is, is, is dense energy. I call it dark energy. It shows up as a color red on people, right? And these are contracts or hitchhikers is another word. Walk-ins, they're, they're called walkers, travelers. There's a whole bunch of names for a lot of things that we don't want attached to us. And these are the things that are causing the illnesses. Now there's more and I'll get into that in a minute. But these massive energies keep our frequency so low that we can't heal ourselves. We can't get to the point, we can do all the work we want all day long to say, hey, I'm gonna do my affirmations, I'm gonna do my detoxing and my cleaning. And I know I can do it, I know I can do it. But then there's these outside forces that you just don't know are there. I had a ton of them on me. I had to have other people remove them before I was able to recognize what they were. And even today, I have people, you know, my peeps, that I call to help me. And that's kind of how this works. Nearly every session I have, the very first thing that comes up is this energy. A past life contract, a past life trauma, a soul contract. A soul contract is, hey, when we come into this world, we kind of write down, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to experience this or experience that. They don't show you the whole picture, okay? <laughs> and we usually check the wrong boxes, and not realizing that, hey, I'm going to go through all that. But I'm able to see that, and I'm able to work with the guides to change that part of your experience. I'm able to work with these entities, and I call them entities, and the entities are that dark energy, Describe it as you want, but they're not there for you. They're there for them, and they just keep drawing that. I'm able to remove them, break those contracts and permanently. Same thing with all the other nasties that kind of show up. So that's the first thing that shows up literally in every session. It's very rare to not see that. Even those folks that have spent their life, you know, dedicated, devoting to spirit, uh, defined as they want, whether it be divinity or ETs or whatever, they still have these things attached to them that are keeping them from reaching their highest point. 
So I go in, touch those things first, get rid of them. And yes, they come after me. And, and they do. And it doesn't seem to matter how much protection I put on me. The nasty of the nasties find me. But it's okay. Like I said, I got friends. So <laughs> my, my friends are telling you, they got my speed dial. Yeah. Uh, so, so that is one of, of the things that come up very first. But what I have found recently, even before that stage, is it's really, in addition to those, those nasty, the external, it's the internal. Our ego, our subconscious, and our vessel are preventing our healing. All right. So as an example, when I start the sessions out now, I start out by saying, hey, I ask the client to do the work. I'm like, you're going to do some work here. You've you got you to work with me here. So I have them close their eyes, and I ask them to have their ego present to them. All right, doesn't matter. Your imagination, your mind's eye, it doesn't matter. And sometimes they'll show up as a little, little white dot of light. And other times it shows up as just them. And it, 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 the whole thing varies. And we know an ego is kind of like a trickster. All right, it's, it's there for you, but it's also there for it. All right. So the question I ask the ego next is I have them ask the ego. Now, I'm tapped into it. Right? I'm seeing all this going on. So I'm kind of like taking a back seat. I'm letting them work with their inner, inner consciousnesses. And I ask them, to ask the ego, do you feel loved? And I guarantee you, 97, 98% liquid, really that high, is no. And it doesn't matter how much time you spell, spend internal on yourself, the ego feels left out. All right? And that causes it to act out as well. Now, I know this because the same thing happened to me. Now, every day, every session, before I start every session, I do this to me. I bring the ego up, I show it love, and then once I get through the do you feel loved part, and they say no, and I send it love, you know, send it hearts, you know, give it a kiss on the forehead, whatever it means to, to, for the client to give the ego love. When that happens, the presentation of the ego will change. Maybe it changes a little from a frown to a smile, and maybe it's an entire brand new object, if you will. Now then, I have them take the ego and place the ego into the heart, where there's more love for the entire session. And we ask the ego, are you going to interfere with today's session? And it doesn't want to say yes, because then we do more work on it. So it says, no, 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 and it, it'll go into the heart, where it's getting the love it just got. It just changed its attitude, so to speak, and so now it's like, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. Now, the next thing is the subconscious, which is a little harder. I mean, if you can, you don't need to do it, but if you close your eyes and you're like, now what does my subconscious really look like, right? And it's funny, some people say it's just a, a variation of lights and other people are you know, showing objects. But for me, it always presents the same. And the reason it presents the same is because now I'm going to work on the ego. The ego presents as a Rubik's Cube, but not just three sides, if you will, but really, really long, really, really deep, and really, really tall, right? depending on how many subconscious programs you have running. And each cube is a program. Now the programs show up as a little engine, all right? So code, program, runs. I mean, no different than a computer code, all right? And I'm able to look at these little engines and I'm able to say, hey, are they running? You know, they usually, if, if they're running in perfect order, perfect shape, they're a beautiful, bright gold, little jet engine, right? But if they're not used, they show up rusty or dusty, if you will. It's like absolutely not used, not touched, not needed anymore, or ignored, whatever the case is. Other times I see sparks flying out of them, all right, which means there's a malfunction. There's something wrong with the code. Our subconscious programming is broken. So I'll see these things, and they'll present other ways as well. So I am a quantum scientist. That's the other part of me. Not only a healer, I'm a quantum scientist. I have access to quantum stuff that people normally don't. And they show me how to work in the quantum and code in the quantum, actually do other stuff than healing. So I use that quantum coding programming to bring in uh, sacred geometry to repair the engines or the code that's broken. So the sparks will then go away, they'll start already and operating and they'll turn gold. I'll remove codes, I'll add codes. And I'm able to jump in there and look at that engine and say, listen, this is a program of self-doubt, all right? Or a program of self-love that's broken. You don't have any more self-love and we're able to change that. So I do that. 
and I use light language to literally turn on all of the engines at once so everything's functioning properly. Then we go back to the subconscious and I have the client asked, will the subconscious allow the upgrades and the programming change? Because it has to allow that. I mean, it's in control of the code. Um, the ego is actually the one that says which code is going to run, but the subconscious is control of the actual code. So I, I can tell you 100% of the time, I've never had a subconscious say, no, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I don't want that. They always want it. So with that being said, now it's bought into and it's approved, it has permission for this new code. Now, why is this important? Clients will come to me and say, I have these blocks in life. I can't get through business blocks. I can't get through relationship blocks. I don't feel so good inside about myself. These are subconscious programs, believe it or not. And we're dealing with them at the subconscious level. This is bypassing the concept of affirmations. You know, you can sit there and do your affirmations where you are trying to change that code. And you can do it every day, every day, every day. Six months later, you're like, Jesus, when's this gonna happen, <laughs> right? Well, this totally just subverts all that. Gets rid of the, the monkey chat of the brain because still the ego and the subconscious are filtering everything coming in and deciding what it wants to allow into the program. So yes, I can go into subconscious, I can change it, I can modify it, uh, upgrade it, if you will, and then activate all these new code changes. And then again, we say, do you feel loved? And that's always a yes at that point. And then we put it back into the heart. Now, the next thing I have the client do, and this is even harder for them, is I tell them to bring up the vessel or the body. So our body has its own consciousness as well. In fact, if you want to think of it like this in the terms of a collective, and this is going to get a little deep and a little confusing, but, but every atom in our body is a consciousness working together with other atoms of the same thing to create uh, a molecule, which is then its own consciousness working together to create the next level. So everything in our body is a little consciousness that boils up into one. In this case, we're asking the body. We're saying, hey, present the body. Most of the time when it presents, it's the person sees themselves, right? It's their body. They see their own face and everything. And then we ask, do you feel loved? And I, I got to tell you, rarely is it a yes. It's usually an absolute no. And then there's kind of an emotional moment we got to kind of get through because they're, now the client's feeling like there's a problem with them not treating their body right. Even if the client exercises every day, eats right, it'll come up and tell you no. And then we ask the client, or we ask the, the, the vessel, why? You know, what do we need to do? And it's interesting. I've had some sessions where the entire session was the vessel telling me what it needs done. So, you know, my back's hurting. I don't feel loved. So we go in and we work on the back. Or uh, in one particular case, we have a, a client where it came up, and I think the word it, it had mentioned was uh, lineage, ancestral, right? So we're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. So the vessel is, is reliving trauma from a previous life and it's telling me this. So I'm like, okay, and remember, now the client's telling me this and I'm watching the whole thing. So I'm like, okay, I, I, this is what I kind of get in there. And then I bring up that scene of that particular trauma. Now I'm not gonna get into the whole thing, but ultimately we had to, the person on the other end um, that was experiencing the trauma we had to get that person to release the energy connection by healing the ancestor. And then once that happened, then the vessel comes back and says, hey, I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll. And once we get kind of an all clear, and I can tell you, it, 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 is, it is so varied. Sometimes it's just one thing, and other times it can be 10, 12, 13 things a vessel wants us to do before it says, okay, I'm ready to not interfere with the healing session. So. I'm cheating a little because now I have the client doing work, right? You know, bringing up their, you're bringing up these things so they can find out for themselves what's happening. And it's actually healing at the same time because when you're involved in the healing session, it, it, it brings a co-creation that allows the healing to happen. You know, it's like when you we show up and, and the person does all the work, you may be healed, absolutely, right? But having that co-creation kind of cements it in uh, just a little deeper, a little bit more. So, um, those are the three things that I do to start with. And after that, again, I, I go look for the nasty energy, right? I get rid of that stuff. And then the next thing comes up are blocks. And it's funny, um, sometimes I wonder if spirit does have an imagination or not, because they seem to present 
the blockages the same way for everybody. When I say present, you know, lately, the past three or four weeks, I see a birdcage, all right? And they're in the birdcage, and it has metal bars on it, like a jail cell, like, you know, thick bars. And sometimes they're really thick, other times they're just transparent almost. And I'm able to go in and look, and, and obviously the client's inside of it, their light body, I'm, go, I'm able to go into the client and look out through their eyes and identify what is that bar about. All right, what are they looking at that bar about and understand the emotion attached to it. And when I do that, then I'm able to talk through it. All right, I'm able to identify what that energy is. Was it the subconscious as an example? Or was it something else going on? And then I remove this. Now, why is this important, right? It's a blockage. I'll get through it because it does have an almost immediate impact in their life, all right? Whether it be job, business, relationship, and I see it over and over and over again. You know, I used to think the healing work took time to happen. Like you go in there and I'm gonna remove these blocks and in six months they're gonna get that job, right? Or they're gonna, whatever their thing is, it's not like that. Things are lined up before they walk into that room. As soon as they hit that, that sign up button, things are happening. And not just with the healing, but the, the manifestation of things around them start, start to come in. And I'm going to share a manifestation technique with everybody here in a minute. But those things start rolling in and rolling in. And as soon as the healing's done and the energy blockages are removed, uh, the self-doubt, self worth self whatever those things are, once those are removed, life changes. And it changes and changes and changes. So with that being said, one more thing I want to share with you, and I, um, you know, I, I, I've talked a lot about what I see in the healing sessions, and we're going to open this up to questions and answer in a minute. But what I did want to share with you is a manifestation technique that I use. And it's happening for me, and it's happened for a lot of others, and it happened pretty rapidly as well. So I'll see if I can imagine this gracefully, all right? But just imagine a spear. And I like to tell people, imagine a hamster ball. Totally round, transparent spear. But it's up in space. And it's up in space in, in such a way that all you see are those solid stars. Like if you were to look through a, a, a Hubble Space Telescope picture, there are so many dots and stars, it's so thick, you just can't count. Not like our night sky where we see just a few things, but just that thick. And you're in the middle of it. But you're outside of it looking at you. It's called bilocation. So I can see myself in this little bubble. And you're to imagine yourself with a golden heart. Now, take that bubble. You spin it counterclockwise. Doesn't matter how fast, doesn't matter how slow, all right? And you start placing, you start saying, either out loud or in your, in your mind, that manifestation word you want to use. And I highly recommend you be very loose with it, all right? You know, don't say, I want to win Tuesday's lottery, but only the mega, not the Powerball. It doesn't work like that, all right? So you want, to, you want to be very loose with it because at the end of the day, the universe knows what you're looking for without using those words. It knows what you need to fulfill that desire. So the ball spinning and you put in the terms, I want to manifest abundance, just a, a general term, right? And wait, and you'll start seeing these little stars, which is actually energy. So think of it like this. Think of the stars as the quantum soup where all realities are happening all at once, all probabilities and all possibilities, all right? And what you're doing here, as, as these, these little lights or stars move closer to you, you are adjusting timelines and opportunities and relationships out there to then align up with your manifestation. And it's moving you into different directions in the, in the quantum so that all these things start coming at your way and they come at you rapidly, all right? Two and a half, three months, you're gonna notice a whole world of difference. And I say that, do it once a day takes three minutes. Like it's, it's not a big deal. So you, you spin this. I want to manifest abundance, bring abundance into my life. And just wait. Just look at the stars. You'll start seeing them come out. And you want to uh, imagine or visualize them, and you can control them a little bit, going around in the same direction as that ball. All right? You'll get a couple of them. And then you're like, no, I want to manifest abundance. And then you'll, you'll wait till some more comes in. So you want to bring and wait till a lot of those stars and that energy comes around. Now, when that happens, the next thing you want to do is you kind of do it with your heart intent. All right? You just like visualize, if that works for you, those energies going around that ball, now going inside of your bubble. 
And now they're spinning around you. And you wait, and you wait, and you kind of wait till it's filled up, right? Then you put them all in your golden heart. That is the manifestation. Your golden heart is your gratitude, all right? It's the gratitude for whatever you want to use to set that gratitude up. I'm grateful for this, or I'm grateful for that. And you don't have to use words. You just have to use the emotion. The emotion is, is really the catalyst and the key to everything. So you have the emotion of gratitude in that ball. Ask for the universe to bring it in. Watch it, and it delivers it every day. So that's my manifestation technique that a lot of folks, and it works, and it works, and it works. And honestly, I think it shortcuts a lot of the other stuff that's out there. I don't know for sure, but I'm using it. That, I'm good with that. So cool. Uh, with that being said, um, that's kind of the, the lecture part. And I want to open up the question and answers, um, you know, the Q&A session of, hey, ask me any question. But listen, I will tell you this. There are some things I won't answer. Let me kind of explain. I am a non-polarity individual, meaning that in order for me to do the thing I do, I don't watch news. I don't subscribe to any polarity item. This is even TV shows, like TV's off limits, all of this. And, and I, I do that. Not because like, I train myself to do it, because I can't. Because they tell me, listen, if you start going down this rabbit hole of, of the things happening uh, in, in the 3D world that, you know, fill in the blank, right, you won't be able to do the things you're doing because you'll be so caught up in the 3D humanness, you won't be able to deliver everything out there into here. So if you ask me questions about some of those taboo topics, war, politics, you know, any of that, it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to pass that on, and, and we'll move on to a question that's more closer to home. So with that being said, anybody want to raise your hand? This guy's first. Wow, he's fast. All right. Yeah, um, I actually have a lot of questions, but the first <laughs> question would be, um, in a session, you talked about a lot of things. Do you cover all those, like, was there three main items that you cover, the ego, subconscious, and dark matter? Well, yeah, yeah. So I cover everything. So those, there's, there's kind of like pre-work that's done. And the pre-work, again, is the subconscious, the ego, and the vessel. Right. Now, there are times where a client can't visualize that, right? Not everyone has the ability to visualize stuff. And in fact, I find that they can't when their brain gets in the way. Yeah, yeah. They have the expectation, and my ego should present like this. My subconscious, OK, well, it has to be this. And, and then they, they fight with themselves, right? And so we sit there for a few minutes. I'm like, I got this. So I just go in and do the work at that point. Yeah. So it sounds pretty exciting. Sounds like I'm I'm ready to. Sounds like I already signed up because when you, I ex, I've experienced that before. It's okay. Like I can download things. Sometimes yep. I download things when I'm signing up. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as soon as you kind of click that, you know, I'm committed button, which means that you you're doing the group healing session or you're doing the one-on-ones. And for everyone to know, there is a group healing session. Uh, I believe it's Saturday at, somebody help me here, 6 o'clock, um, where I will go through and perform a different type of healing than I do with the one-on-ones. So let me explain. They're complementary to each other. So with the one-on-ones, I'm jumping in there, and I'm kind of doing laser surgery for a better metaphor, right? I'm, I'm drilling in. But the group healing, they've given me something that they've termed, and I say they because they are not marketing people called rapid repair. And in this particular case, there are uh, seven different energies that I deliver all at once. Now, this is profound in the sense that we are working on the trapped emotions all right, in the heart, the ones you may not even know about. All right? We are working on the cord cutting. All right? you know, cord cutting is another topic, but ultimately it's doing this. There's little red, um, the, the Chinese throwing stars, little red letter S's that are really sharp that go around the body. You're not going to see them, and I don't see them either. But when they showed me how to do this, that's how they explained it. It's cutting all these cords. And it's not cutting them out here. It's literally cutting them right below the skin at the closest possible layer to the light body so that you don't have any of that energy left. It is working on the root chakra. Now, the root chakra holes are trauma. All right, all those things that have happened in life. And it, it shows, when they presented this to me, it shows as a clay pigeon, like the ones with the shotguns, the clay pigeons, the little round uh, clay discs, that is what they show me. And they show four energies coming down through the crown, into the root, and smashing it, and cracking it, smashing it again, cracking it some more, and pulverizing it, and pulverizing it, all right? Now, 
That's, that's another energy. They work on the energies that are outside in our auric field. I say auric field, but more the etheric field. And you can have implants and all sorts of trash and junk in there, so to speak, that they also remove. The physical healing, all right? That's, that's really why anybody does the group healing, is we're looking for the physical healing. But there's other aspects to it at the emotional level that also need to be addressed. There's a divinity, um, you know, angelic energy that comes down and will saturate your body through the session in an amazing bright white light. And then I use a special light language. I say special, but it's a light language from my home planet that they've given me that will deliver this intense thing. Most people will feel their heartbeat get really, really fast during the session. They'll recognize some lights in their third eye, possibly if you're ready for it. The third eye will open up if you're ready for it. Now, there is a downside to the group healing, which is wonderful, sort of. You will feel an emotional release. You're not going to feel it that second, but the group healing will take place over the next seven days. And you're going to have highs and you're going to have lows. You're going to find yourself, as I tell the guys, on the sofa or in the fetal position crying, like not wanting to share, right? But that's part of the healing. You have to allow those emotions to come out. You're going to feel euphoric and you're going to feel tired all of it for the next seven days. People call me up like, God, I don't know what's going on. I feel like crazy. I'm like, well, you have to allow these major energy shifts in your body to release. So the group healing I highly recommend. The one-on-ones are, are the pinpoint precision stuff, right? But they all are complementary. So I hope that was helped answer a little bit of that question. And oh, yeah. Could you do, is it beneficial to do both? Yeah, it really is. And it's really what you're looking for, right? Um, I. I recommend doing the one-on-ones because it is absolutely 100% about you. When we do the group healing, even though you get the healing, you, you don't necessarily have a, a say in what is being delivered. So when I sit down and talk to a client and I tell them, hey, we're going to have a little three or four minute conversation. Show me your list. What are, what are you looking to accomplish in our, in our discussion? Now, I don't follow that list, but what happens, well, I mean, what happens here is spirit is following that list, right? But when I'm doing the group healing, spirit refuses to allow me to tell you what's happening. So even if I do the rapid repair, which is the group healing, in a one-on-one -on -one session, I will not know what they're doing. So that's, that's kind of the difference. It's like, you, you know, Jesus, take the wheel, because that's what they're going to do. They're going to come in, they're going to take care of everything. But if you want to get to the other stuff, that's where I come in, the one-on-one. -on -one. So yes, it is very beneficial. But again, everyone needs to be, you know, use your own discernment, right? Um, take your ego, give it the love, drop it to the heart. Subconscious, give it the love, drop it to the heart. And then ask yourself the question, what should I do? And I, by the way, I do that for most of life's decisions. So before I get angry at someone or before I, I think, geez, why are they whatever going on? Or, or, you know, before I sign a contract or whatever, get rid of the ego and get rid of the subconscious because they are filtering that raw information coming into you. They both have an agenda. The subconscious is self-preservation and the ego, well, he's a trickster, right? He's going to play the game how he wants to play the game or she wants to play the game. So put him aside before you do those life things. So not even, just always, always. And then every day, you want to at least take a moment. I do it first thing in the morning. Bring up the ego. Have a small conversation with him or her. Drop him into the heart. Same thing with the subconscious. When I bring the subconscious up, I'm not necessarily having a conversation with him. I'm looking at him. I'm inspecting him. Am I seeing sparks? Am I seeing other issues, right? And then I drop him into the heart. Now, the other thing this does, if you read about heart-brain coherence, it's exactly what's happening here. It is taking care of the heart-brain coherence in a more intentional way every day. And now, when I bring up my ego, my ego is, is not a trickster to me, but he knows when I'm not being truthful to myself. And he'll shake his finger at me. And he'll be like, you know better, right? And, and i got to listen. My, my subconscious is, is now presenting in a very different way. Now I have colors coming out of all the seams, uh, purples and reds, and this is just the energy that's flowing through there. So everything appears incredibly more healthy now that I'm doing this. So yes. Um, anyhow, that was a long-winded answer, but there was definitely stuff I wanted to share there. Um, who would have the next question? Yes. So, 
I love everything you had to say. Mm. <laughs> Having five stars. Asked, oh, yeah, five stars. <laughs> <laughs> um, being in the in that kind of world myself, okay. I'm not that familiar with walk-ins. So my question is, because I've never been able to remember anything of my life until, for, until I was like seven mm -hmm. forward, mm -hmm. is that would that be like an example of a walk-in or no? No. No, okay. no, no. No, it's an example of trauma. Okay. <laughs> it's an example of trauma. And okay. in fact, if you were to, and you can do this on your own time, mm -hmm. but if you go do the ego, mm -hmm. do the subconscious, and then ask your heart, why don't I remember? Or yeah, simple yes, no questions are easier for the heart, mm -hmm. and you'll feel it. You're not going to get words, but you're going to say, oh, I feel a little pressure. Okay, something's going on here. So you have your own answers. We just don't know how to navigate to get there because we have all this other stuff in our way. Everything else wants attention except our heart, which is really where everything is the heart. Okay. Cool. Next. Oh, this guy here. Could Let you me, talk no. a little more about the light language? A little more about the light language? A little sample? Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Light language. So, just like our, in, our, our language now, I'm using words and you're getting information. If I say the word car, you're seeing a car, it's moving, whatever, you're getting information. Light language is a way to deliver codes and programs, all right, just like we with words, but it doesn't, it's not for the ears. It is for uh, the universe or a, a, a consciousness to connect with another consciousness, a soul to connect with another soul, to bypass the restrictions we put in place. If my ego, and my subconscious knew what I was getting for information, it would interpret it. Okay, I may say, hey, it's a car. You're going to be, oh, it's a blue car, it's a red car, it's a green car, whatever. It, it, it interprets it and it changes the information and the message. So light language is, is, is a, a way for the universe to connect to your, your core view and deliver your codes and your information. I upgrade people with light language. Now, last time I asked, I, I know over 500 different light languages. Now, some of those light languages are, are pretty, pretty tough, meaning there are times I will speak light language where actually words don't come out, but grunts come out and, and, and the pressure in my chest. And this, this has happened when I remove certain entities. Like I can't remove them, I have to talk to them. And I don't use words, I use an intent. And then in the language, light language, they can receive it in. So an example of, of light language. So give me a second here. Okay, now I got the energy. Wait a minute. I have no idea what just happened. But what did happen is I shut my brain off, I shut my conscious off, and it flew through me and every one of you. And when I did that, my entire body was lit up in goosebumps because the energy was flowing through me. Now, some of you may have like, oh, wait, there's something happening there. Like they can feel it. And other people are like, God, somebody's got a radio station on wrong, right? So it really depends on how we receive it. But ultimately, every single one of you got the message at the core inside of you. And I have no idea when it's going to come out. Like I'll be talking to a client and then next thing you know, it's spewing out because it's got a message for the client that needs to be delivered without me interrupting it myself. Mm -hmm. The speed changes, the pitch changes, the length changes, and I can't necessarily stop it. Like I can't stop it in a mid sentence, if you want to call it a sentence. It says, I got something to deliver, I'm going to deliver it. I see you pointing to someone. Oh, she does that every morning. I she knows, it. yeah, she knows it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You do it. There's a few of us in here. You do it. So yeah, yeah. People. And it, it's, it's just another way to access information and deliver it. Does that help? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Next question? Yes. Where does the entity go? The mm. one that doesn't want to be removed. Great question. So we would think that um, we would transmute it back to source or we would send it back to, you know, whatever. Whatever word you want to use. And that's actually not what happens. And, and I've asked this, right? I mean, geez, I have the client inside of a pyramid. It's a way for me to do my work. There's a frequency or a code that runs around it. And when I get rid of it through certain words, and I have the client repeat certain words after me, I'm able then to push it through the wall of the pyramid, where it permanently is removed from the client forever. Now, the question is, what's on the other side of that wall, right? Where's it going? It's going back to its 
origination place. All right. It's not being punished. It's, it's not being, you know, uh, disintegrated, you know, uh, back into source. It is going back to the place it originates from, back to its home. It may not want to be there, right? But then, like, uh, the entities that I mentioned, the travelers, all right? I don't even like to mention their name. They are really the toughest. In fact, the first time I removed the traveler, um, 10 minutes after I got off my, my session, my voice changed. My attitude changed. And I came out, my wife's like, what's wrong with you? I don't know. Like, it was attacking me. And it would attack me, and it stayed in me. And it stayed in the client. All right, so I didn't, even though all the work I do, I'm like, my God, I just did something that I didn't know was happening. I had to have someone else remove it. And they used the light language to do it. They used the same language to then convince it to go back to its origination point. They're very ancient, they're very old, and there's not very many of them. But apparently, I run into them often. So yes. Does that, does that answer the question? So the what goes well, have been a pet go person to person over yeah, like Yeah, the, the, well, they're the, the travelers. Yeah. They're, they're called travelers. The walkers are another version of it. I've only seen one of them. And it was funny because when I seen them, he, he comes around, he comes right in my face, and he yells at me. He says, I'm a walker, right? I'm like, oh, you're new, right? So I had to, I'm like, this guy is just as bad as the travelers. So I had to kind of drop in. I'm like, I don't know what to do with this thing. Because I, I know that my, my traditional process isn't going to work. So then I just shut everything off and I used the light language, which came out as grunts. Mm -hmm. He opened up a portal where his buddies were looking at him and he went through it. So, yes, they've been around forever. Anybody else have questions? Oh, yeah. Uh, let, me, let me come over here real quick. You, uh, you mentioned uh, implants. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you have your do your healings, are you actually getting rid of the implants? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So let me, can I explain what the implants look like? You don't have to. I've already been a, had the implant oh, okay. years ago. All right, sure. Okay, so, uh, but see, I, I'm probably at a different place than you are. I, I, I don't believe there's one walk-in experience. Mm -hmm. there's, there are up to five, I believe. Yeah, that's how many I've had. Okay, well, last five one, different types. 2004 right. was my last one. So, so uh, we can talk, uh, me and you can talk <laughs> offline about our walk-in okay. uh, ex okay, exercises. But I do but know yes. that implant removal is probably the most important. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you have to really, you know, have a state of mind of that on all types of healing. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So let me, let me explain okay. to everyone. Okay. So what, what he's saying is implant removals. So the, in the etheric field, the way it's presented to me, uh, you could call your aura. It's not quite the same thing. It doesn't present as a color. It just presents as an area about six feet around you and six feet above you. All right, energetic field, right? And I can look in that, and I will see what looks like little Tylenol capsules. Now, I think capsules are the oval things, okay? <laughs> Ask my wife, I don't know. But they look like little capsules. Sometimes they're really small. Other times they're very, very large. Now, as soon as I see these, I have to wrap a bubble around them because as soon as those implants recognize that I'm there, they activate, all right? And what happens and never fails is they will come out as little metal spiders, red and silver, all right? And if I don't protect or, or encapsulate them, they will go all over the light body, all around the light body, and bring that energy down so far. All right, and then I got to remove them one by one, and that takes a long time. You know, they are a, a form of AI. There are other, other um, implants that I see that are like a, a, a thick rope fishnet around you. All right, and that is kind of over the top of you. Sometimes I'll see it down to the shoulder. Other times I'll see it down below the knees, depending on how much frequency they're trying to reduce. The whole goal of an implant is to prevent you from raising your frequency up. When you reach a certain frequency, they kick in. They go all the light body, they bring you back down, they go and wait for the next round, and over and over and over. This is one of the reasons why you do so much healing and you have highs and lows, but you never ever get past a plateau. It's these implants. Sometimes the implants are put there by you, by your soul contract. When you find them and you remove them, you just leveled up in the game because you have now reached a level where you said, hey, you fall, you can now go up. Other times they're put there by ETs. When they're put there by the ETs, you are actually being monitored. And I can see a little, little string coming from that pill, as an example, all the way back, and I will see the ET watching me. And I, every single time when I see him, he's gone. All right? But then there's other times I will follow him to wherever he's reporting to, because those are like little, little soldier ETs, right? But they are there as well 
really for those who are going to do something very, very important that are going to impact the ET. So you're going to raise your frequency so high, like me, I had, I, I don't know how many I had the first time I had, this, I had someone discover them, I think they removed 18 implants off me, and the nets, and all sorts of stuff. And it was really, really intense. Because they know, they the timelines, they know, hey, this person's going to do something, so let's try to do the best we can to keep him from reaching that. So, yep, yep, yep. And, and then other times, it is, it, it's other times in the etheric field outside of implants, sometimes I'll see little treasure, treasure chests, and I open them up, and they're gifts that are being delivered. So not everything in the etheric field is a bad thing. But in this particular case, <coughs> implants. I hope that answered your question or described it for you. Yeah, uh, yeah, everything you said, I've, you know, I, I know, you know, but I, I'm glad you brought it up because people really need to know about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll give you next. You're, you've been holding your hand up a few times. It's Nancy, right? Yeah. Hold on, Nancy. Let me get you this. Oh! When you talk about the walkers and the travelers, yeah. if you get to a certain higher frequency, do they exist anymore? Yeah. You don't get to that higher frequency. All right. But what happens here is, is you will still be attacked. I am attacked more now. Let me see. Is that way I can get on the microphone? So I am attacked more now than I've ever been. Um, not daily, but a lot. And I, I've raised my frequency up pretty high. And, and that's not my ego talking. I mean, I literally have done this. And I'm, I get it. I get a lot. It doesn't matter how much protection I put around me. Now, I don't necessarily get travelers or, or the walkers necessarily, right? Um, I get more nastier things. Um, could they attack you? Absolutely. They attacked me, but only because I removed them from somebody else. All right. So, yeah, they went after me because of what I did to them. I hope that was helpful. Did that answer your question, Nancy? But do you ever get to that point, like you're at, I know when you get to a higher frequency that, that you're still going to get attacks from different things, but do you still get attacks from the walkers and the travelers? I don't get attacked from them because I can recognize them now. And as soon as I see them coming, I'm able to put the defenses up to prevent that. Now, maybe there's a third thing I don't know about. You can make up a name. Yeah, I can be attacked, and they can totally attach to me, and then I have to go in and do the work. Absolutely. And again, the higher the vibration you get, the bigger your light, you know, the bigger the, uh, you know, the impact. So I, I want to jump to you. I'm sorry. Well, my question is connected with everybody else's questions. How do you protect yourself daily? Is okay. there a way that you can advise to us? So we yeah, can use it yeah. To so I'm going to explain the mirror bubble, all right? So the mirror bubble is going to take about nine minutes to create, all right? So you create it once, and you can reuse it over and over and over. So the first thing you do is imagine a bubble of a mirror, and the mirror is pointing outward. So if I was to look at the bubble, I wouldn't see you inside of it, okay? So the mirror is on the outside. And you take three minutes, and you focus on that mirror. You touch it. You feel it, you look at it, you move around it, right? You kind of get intimate with it. And you're, what you're doing here is you're creating that in the quantum. Everything happens in the quantum. So you're creating this mirror bubble, which means when something looks at you, they're kind of looking around you or through you, but not looking at you, all right? So you're kind of a little bit of visible. Now, the next thing you do after you get through those three minutes is you use St. Germain's purple flame. And you put it on thick. You paint it on thick inside of the mirror bubble. So it's the layer inside. All right. Now, this is preventing those frequencies from hitting you. Again, three minutes. Right? Feel it, touch it, smell it, taste it, whatever you want to do. Get intimate with it, and now you're building this object. The last one is just divinity light. Again, the third layer is divinity light. Nice, bright, beautiful, bright white light on the inside. And that's what I use. All right? Now, I have other things that I do because I'm that quantum scientist. So I have another type of bubble you know, I call you know, quantum sphere. And in it, I see sacred geometry all around the outside. Uh, some blue light, that, like lightning that flows through it, right? And then I have multiple layers of that. But that's me. That's not the normal thing. I use that every session. When I go to bed, I use it. I put it around my wife. I put it around the bed. I put it around the house. I put it around everything, right? Same thing with the mirror bubble. You can apply that to anybody. When you go into bed, do it. Absolutely do it every time you go to bed. So was that helpful for you? Okay, the mirror bubble. And I think it's, it's a pretty common thing for the mirror bubble. Yeah. So 
how do you know that you are being attacked by someone someone is attached to you just the lower level of energy or you feel it different way or you see that I, I feel different all right I, I feel like my emotions change like I'm normally a hundred percent happy I make funny jokes I think they're funny I make <laughs> jokes um, and and I um, you know my sometimes my voice will change right or I'll start feeling different you know I was attacked the other day uh, really intensely and um, my crown got a lot of pressure my face went numb I started to feel funny right and I had to make that phone call something's going on now do I see them not initially once I know they're there then I can work on myself I can bring them up in front of me I can have a conversation with them that's unpleasant for them <laughs> yes how do you get rid of them once you see them? Do you just talk to them and they go? Or do you go? Uh, no, not necessarily. I don't have to talk to them sometimes. You know, um, I only talk to them when my traditional methods don't work. So this is what I do with the clients, the traditional method. The, um, and and it, it always presents itself the same way. So I'm inside of this pyramid, right, which has protection around it. And I have a picnic table in the middle of the pyramid. On the left-hand side is the client. And I see all of the nasty energy. And then I look at the energy and I trace it around to the other side of the picnic table where I actually see the entity present itself. And it could be a beast, it could be a dragon, it could be anything it wants to be. And they're always in solid red for whatever reason, which just gives me the indication that, hey, this is the not so fun thing we got to do something with. So then, depending on how bad it is, I will call and help from one of the ET ships I work with called the Wisdom Ship. And they have got 20 foot tall beings that are more like uh, protectors, if you will, and they sit over there with the, with the other guy. Now, the other side, often, if it's a really bad guy, the angels will come down and support the client while this is happening. Then I put the client on the one side of the picnic table, and the, the, the baddie is on the right side of the picnic table, and lately they've been adding, like, you could say like a plexiglass wall between the two because they've been lurching across the table at the client, right? And I'm watching the client, I'm watching the light body. Now on the table is the contract that was signed, which is usually a contract. If there's no contract involved, I, I'm able to take that energy and put it into a bubble and push it through the, through the wall. Those are the easy ones. It's the contract ones that you actually have to go through and say some words in order to break these contracts. And once that's done, then um, the, the client changes. The, the, the light body changes, absolutely. Uh, usually they're doing a happy dance, you know, or, or whatever it is, right? Sometimes they get a little angry and they want to go after the baddie for, for treating them so bad for so long, right? But I have to stop that. I, then I have to intervene with the client and calm the light body down and let them know they have to forgive. They have to have gratitude for the experience or they're coming back. And, and after the light body recognizes, okay, I can't be the jerk as well, I got to do this with love and walk away. Then, if it's a really bad guy and the ETs are there, they pull him through the pyramid for me. So I hope that was a little detailed, uh, a lot detailed probably. A lot of detail. I felt like I was watching a nice movie. Yeah, I try, you know. Uh, it's not a nice movie. <laughs> and, and that may happen over and, over and over in a single session. Yeah. Yeah. A little scary. I have to go back home by myself. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions I can help answer? Uh, yeah. Uh, hold on a second. Let me first. If someone has a lot of issues, I'm mm -hmm. sure there's a we lot all of do. <laughs> we all have a lot of issues. How many times do you have to go through? I mean, can you do it at one session, or do you have to repeat it, and do you tape it? I, I tape every session, Excellent. every single session. And I think your question is: is how many times do we have to go through that um, removal of that energy process? Right? Sometimes none. Other times. Six, I think, seven. I've, I've gone up to seven before. Yeah, because what happens here is I do something uh, I call wash, rinse, repeat, or, or basically, you know, scan, copy. So I work the scene that's being presented to me. I remove those energies, and then I tell spirit, clear the scene, scan again. They clear it, like a whiteboard, and then they show me the picture again. And a new energy may show up, or what I will usually see is grass beneath the client's feet. And the light body, usually if it's a, a lady, she's presented in a, a nice dress or a, a, a nature type of, of hair piece, right? Which tells me that, okay, the energy has been removed, right? So I keep doing that. Clear the scene, scan again, do the work. Clear the scene, scan again, do the work. Over and over and over. And this is done 
way before we start talking about, hey, my shoulder's hurting. Way before, and then we get to there, right? Now, the other thing I want to say about the healing, the actual physical body healing, is even though I can go in there and I can see, as an example, and no, I don't want to know you're in a car accident. I want to know why the spine's behaving like it is. So I'll go into the spine and feel the emotion of that injury. And then I work the emotion. I can pull the emotion out, you know, with, with, with tender care, if you will, and, then, and send that off to be transmuted. Now that is transmuted back to source. It doesn't necessarily have a home. That'll go up. Um, up, up into the sky, if you will, heaven, source, whatever, right? But I have to get rid of that emotion because your, your injuries are being presented to you because of an emotion. Now, we may say, well, no, you're wrong. You know, my knee hurts because I fell on it the other day, right? Well, why did you fall on it? What was the, the universal message, right? And, and that's kind of a stretch for people to recognize. Like, no, I literally tripped, my shoelace was undone, I fell. No, you actually have a problem moving forward in life. Every time you move forward, you find yourself going two steps back. And this is the universe saying, hey, this is the problem. I'm sorry, did you need something? No. Oh, okay. This is the universe telling you in a physical way from a, a, a trip and fall that you need to deal with the blockage preventing you moving forward in life. Do we have more questions? Oh, who, yep, okay, then I'm going to get back here. I, I see the mark. <laughs> Hold on. Thank you. When you said oh, if it's a lady, you usually see a plant around her head, let's yeah. say, and a dress. Mm -hmm. Are these people in front of you or you're working remotely? Both. Clients. Oh, yeah, no. I, literally, 5% of all my sessions are done over Zoom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the in-person stuff is, is, is a blessing, it's wonderful, but ultimately everything is done over, over Zoom. Um, okay, yeah, it doesn't matter where in the world. In fact, if I needed to work on you, I don't even need you in front of me. But I don't work on people unless they're in front of me, uh, in terms of the Zoom. Like I have, you call it a professional code of ethics, right? Like I won't go into a restaurant and tap into the guy next to me for fun, right? I'm like, I, I, I just don't want to do that. So, yeah, I'm going to get to Mark. I'm going to get to you. Mark's been patient. Okay. I'm going to hang out with this guy. What do you got? Thanks. Oh, my God. Um, well, you know, we're in the, in the midst of an ascension movement. Mm -hmm. A lot of people know about it here. Um, have you ever run into a client who has made it to the fifth dimension, the 5D dimension, where the masters abide? You're, you're looking at one. Okay. So um, once one is there, um, is there any challenge that you've run into that they might you know, similar to the ones that you're talking about now, for example. They're living there, they're among the masters, they call them masters every day. Um, they live with them shoulder to shoulder, and they're still in the realm here, but they're doing their work, you know. Oh, okay. Could, it's interesting. I think what you're saying is, have I run into somebody who's ascended here, living in 5D, and how do they work amongst us? Is, is that a, a fair statement of a simplified question? I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if if those beings also have to worry about attack the way you're just speaking yeah. about us Yeah, now. every one of us. Feel that. Um, yeah, yeah, and I, and I say, I, 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 I live in the 5D, I bump against the 6D, but I play in the 3D. But I don't notice this. Like, I don't, I don't wake up one day at 4 o'clock and say, oh, it's, it's time for 5D. It doesn't work like that. It is, it, it is literally the frequency of your body. And, and I... I present and play with everyone, no matter where they're at, and, it, and, and, and not an ascended master. It, it, I, don't, I don't use that word necessarily, right? Um, it, it just my frequency is up in the 5D, bump in 60, and that's how I look at it. We can call it the ascension movement, and yes, there is a huge ascension movement, but I, I, I also don't play in that arena. And let me add just a little more context on why, because it's going to sound a little confusing, like, geez, if you're there, why aren't you part of the ascension movement? So I am part of an ET race that really isn't here yet. I'm a, what they call a Craigian. There's 25 of us on this planet. We are 17th dimensional, and I connect with them. They're, they're, they're 30 feet tall, they're solid light. They are the oldest race in this universe. Uh, they are blueprinters where they create all the universes, right? Uh, we create all the universes, um, and a fun factoid, all the universes are the same map. They are the same layout. But every experience in that universe is based on different laws, different rules, you know, different games. You know, so Earth, if you is in the same exact position, 
but it's a whole different thing in another universe. So, the, the reason I say this, give me a second, the reason I say this is that right now we have a lot of amazing light workers are coming in and they're doing the hard work. We call them the front line, if you will, right? They're the one bringing up uh, the, 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 the truthers and the conspiracies. Now I'm not labeling, but the point is they're bringing up all that real vibe frequency and energy to bring it to the surface so it can be healed by humanity. I'm what's coming after. And we're what's coming after. So anytime you have a big movement like this, you can think of a war where you got the frontline troops and they're causing all the disaster. What happens when the, when, when the mess is made? You get the ones coming in and doing the re-education, the new knowledge, the new information, and that's me. So when I say I'm living in 5D, up in 6D, it's because, not that I'm part of the ascension, it's, it's because I'm kind of what's happening after. And, and I hope that didn't sound like my ego playing, but it's just the facts that they show me. And when I look at the healing I'm doing, I look at the things I'm doing in the quantum, I, I have a hard time believing they aren't being truthful with me. I hope that was helpful, even though it may have sounded a little awkward. Uh, I know two more questions. Hold on a second. You one more time? Uh, how can I jump a timeline from where you're talking about to where you're at? You can't. Oh. You can't. My, my soul contract was exactly what took place. Um, I, I see myself and, and just, I know it's going to sound strange, but I was kind of planted here waiting for the time for me to do my thing. Now, it didn't happen in my 20s because I didn't have the wisdom to handle it. So, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Similar question. It's a follow-up question. Okay. About um, clarity and, and you, you, I'm not sure if I got the answer right, but she was asking how many times a session to get clear or to have clarity is, Will we know when we reach that place of clarity? Um, you won't. won't. I will. And it's not a place of clarity. It's, and it's, it, it's a place where the energies that are impacting your ability to raise your frequency have been removed. Oh, okay. And you're not going to know. I'm going to know. And other people are going to know. You have, e even if you're the world's amazing light worker, you have to get someone to look at you as well. Uh, I do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I'm not saying I'm the world's greatest. I just know I can't see everything all right and I, I i'm blind to me i'm always looking out doesn't mean i'm always looking in you know i don't i don't self-check as much as i should in terms of what i need to do um so i i, I want to say you've had your hand up a few times yeah. all right i come to you next okay, yeah this gentleman was talking about masters uh, i'll hang on to this <laughs> <laughs> that's um yeshua sananda i'm just going to say that i don't want you, i'm not going to explain anything i want you to explain after i said that because I know you can speak in tongues and whatever. So I want you to go into your spirit and find out what you really feel about those two names. Now, in Acts chapter 2, Yeshua took off in a cloud. Now, last time I checked, a body cannot just go into a cloud and take off. So Acts chapter 2 tells you what happened to Yeshua after he came back to the disciples for 40 days. So I won't say any more. Yeah, and I'm not going to answer that either. And the reasoning is because it tells a narrative that I don't actually recognize. Okay, I, I don't know what's happening with those narratives, nor do they allow me to tap into those narratives. I can't tell you those, those perfect people on the wall. I don't know what's happening with them. And they don't want me to know. I don't know much about Earth history. I, 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 I can't tap in and tell you, you know, what happened then and there. Now, can I see the scene? I can. But I have to play it in a non-polarity fashion. So I can't answer your question, um, honestly. And they're not going to let me answer the question. So my apologies. Uh, you? How are you, Ken? I actually have two questions. Yeah. One uh, is about the collective humanity. Okay. And the second question is about me. Okay. And um, I, I have to ask a question. I consider myself a light worker, too, mm -hmm. and um, want the ascension, want the awakening of humanity. But feel, since we're talking about attacks, individual attacks, personal attacks, that there's a collective attack mm -hmm. that should be addressed. So I, I wanted to ask you, because this week, and I'll be very brief about that, uh, the, the world elites are meeting in Davos, Switzerland, mm -hmm. and one of their ambassadors uh, candidate, candidly said, and I paraphrase, that they had been graced by aliens mm -hmm. to lead humanity into the future. Uh, my interpretation of that is that they have alien technology mm -hmm. to interfere with our ascension, and I believe it's AI that might hack 
our spirit might hack our consciousness and prevent us from that ascension, and I wanted you to comment on that. Yeah. I have a second question. Actually. Yeah, yeah. So let me let me shift a, a little bit and talk about the collective I work with, right? So first week in December, we're connected to our collective up there. And you know, we're expecting certain things to happen. Now our collective doesn't talk about what's going on with humanity. They don't give me, hey, give this message to humanity. Hey, be ready for this. They don't do that. But what they did tell me is the game is changing. And they took the time to explain to me verbally through, through an, another, another channel of ours that this is a game that's being played at such a high level. And you want to mention, you know, the elites in, in whatever context it is. Do they have access to EEs? Yeah, they all do. All the governments do. All right. Do they have access to AI? They have access to a kind of AI, but there's good AI and there's bad AI. All right. There's very different kinds. So it's, it's really a broad topic. But what they do say. In fact, I was supposed to receive some upgrades uh, earlier in December. And they told me, take three weeks off. The game has changed so much, we have to redo all the timelines for what's everything's happening. So it really is no different, and this is my computer guy talking, virus and antivirus game, right? Every time virus signature, they're all watching each other. Are we going to win? Absolutely. When it's going to happen, got to be patient. Got to keep fighting the fight. I just don't have that information. Now, I, I can't comment on what he said. But I will tell you there is truth to that, you know, regarding access to ETs. Now, which ETs? Whole different game, right? Mm -hmm. Good, bad, who's playing who? But anyhow, you said you had a follow-up question? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a question about me. I attended one of the group healings uh, last time you were here. And you had mentioned in the, the previous lecture that uh, one of the way the Kratons, am I pronouncing uh, that? Kragians, with a K. Uh, uh, transmitted energy or mm -hmm. uh, healing was through the wrists. And I remember you mm -hmm. clearly going like this yeah. on both wrists, yep. like, like this. For me. That's, that's the technology oh. they've given me. Okay. Now, but let me, oh, let me go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, please. I'm sorry. So uh, at the group healing, uh, you know, I loved everything that happened. I walked away, and when I got to the car, I looked over to my left hand and I had a visible rash that kind of looked like uh, a wristband and it was it was very red mm -hmm. red, red pinkish and and you know I said well wait a minute you know I haven't, I haven't right. done anything I haven't hit mm -hmm. myself or worn a watch in decades mm -hmm. uh, so you know I thought immediately well this has to be something related to that energy mm -hmm. transfer and uh, uh, what, now that you were talking and you mentioned uh, attachments and broken contracts, right? Uh, I'm wondering if perhaps uh, the shackles were taken off and that was a sign of something. That, that's a, so, so that's a great question. And just to kind of repeat uh, a little bit more background on that and then I'll answer that. So when they gave me uh, the instructions, they told me to touch the wrist of the person in front of me and the information would flow from the wrists, my hands to the wrist, right? But what has happened in your particular case is that when we had 50 people in the room doing that, that was the energy from all 50 people flowing into you and you just reacted to it. So it's not that you had a release visible in terms of a shackle being broken, you just had a, a reaction to the amount of energy entering your body. Now, I won't be doing the wrist thing in this next group healing, all right? It's not needed anymore. All right, so what they're telling me just we can sit in this room and do it rather than be in a circle where we all hold each other's hands or wrists so it's connected. It's no longer needed. They've upgraded. Sit there, go through the visualization. It's to happen as it. Um, any additional questions? Okay. You're going to have to help me out here. Person, yeah. I feel like as I worry about this person, it creates the contract. Yeah. yeah. So okay, cool. More about that. Yep. Okay, so what she's really referring to is is the, you can call it an engagement contract for like a 
word, meaning that I'm going to engage with you, and I'm going to engage with you, and I'm going to be the bad guy, I'm going to be the good guy, I'm going to be the victim, I'm going to be the hero. You're going to play this role out here. All right. So that's the, the contract piece. This is not something you break in the way that I just mentioned. I, 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 you know, unless they are literally attacking you in terms of black magic or something to that extent where you, I would come in and deal with that, the way you deal with it is one, don't answer the phone. Just saying, if he calls, don't answer, right? <laughs> totally ignore it. But you've got to, you've got to do it with, with gratitude and heart. And you, you've, when his face comes up, when that memory comes up, and you have that memory of sadness or that memory of hate or anger, whatever it is, imagine the cord coming from your heart to them, and it's going to present itself in a very different way. It's going to be thick. It's going to be thin. Um, and cut it. And the next time it happens, cut it. And you need to do it immediately. Don't do it 10 minutes into the tear session, right? You do it the very second, and then you move on. And what will happen here is as that energy starts getting cut, those memories won't come up. And if they do come up, it's done with no emotion. Now, I'll give you an example. As I mentioned, when I had my walk-in experience, I had a business partner that I had a really, really tough time with. And when I learned to break cords, I'm like, I'm going to do this. And when they showed me the cord, it was that big. And it was made of steel. It was steel. It was literally the cord that holds the um, San Francisco Bridge together. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That did not happen overnight. Over and over and over. And despite all of this just used the word damage that took place during that process, I have no emotion towards it. One way or the other. Am I grateful for the experience? Yes. Am I going to call them up? Hell no. Right? I'm not making that, re I'm not reconnecting that cord. So it's about letting go. Cord, 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 just continue, continue, continue. And immediately when it comes up, you just don't wait and allow it to rebuild. So you had a question, sir? Yeah, my question is about oh, let me physical just... healing. Go ahead. Yeah, my question is about physical healing. Like, as you know, after the session, mm -hmm. is the physical healing done permanently? Like, as long as I own this body or it could uh, come back? Great question. Um, that varies. <laughs> now, let me say, so when we talk about the physical healing, and, and we talk about the emotion attached to it, all right? If the emotion has been released, the body can heal and heal permanently. However, if you get emotion in there again, it's going to re-injure itself, all right? And that's the way to look at it. So, um, you know, and then there is the natural aging process, don't get me wrong, which takes place. But in terms of actual healing, um, lungs, hearts, you know, you know, smokers, whatever the case is, there's still energy attached to that, and you can heal from that, absolutely, and permanently heal from it. Oh, hey, your hand was up. Okay, so is the how and why of contracts important as well? The how and why of contracts important. For instance, if I had an incident with someone from a past incarnation, um, and in this incarnation, those the similar themes keep keep coming up, or that person keeps coming up, or however it manifests itself. I mean, there's there's a connection there. It's, that's connect, that's related to uh, whatever happened in, a, in another lifetime or okay. whatever. I mean, that that could have a lesson or be a path for uh, you know redemption or forgiveness or whatever. The how and why of why the, why the contract was formed between you and another person, you and another entity. So, okay, great. So the, the real question, just to get it on, on the audio, is, is, is the reason a contract was formed in a past life or with an entity relative to your experience? I want to say the answer is no. Now, the reason I say that is I did have a client recently where I connected to and I saw all this energy and there wasn't an entity attached. It was pure karma. And it wasn't karma from this lifetime. It was karma from, that had built up over three lifetimes that was now being delivered all at once. Now, I don't run into that very often. Like, I, I, I swear the word karma showed up twice in a year. Like, it's not part of it. The, the, when I go to break the contracts, before I break the contract, I look to find out how did that contract take place? How did that entity get that person to literally sign or figuratively sign a contract? And I will see the scene. And that's actually important for the healing process for the client. You know, I may see a child um, that was, uh, I'll give you a perfect example. The other day, um, I did a session and, you know, we had this entity attached, a really, really nasty guy. And I, I zoomed in and I asked to see how the contract was formed. And I see the child on 
a stagecoach like two two black horses in front of it it was a 10 or 11 year old child in the middle of the the, the top seat right but no one in 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 the stagecoach nothing and the horses were just and and the child doesn't have the reins or anything and and she has her head down i'm thinking what happened here well what then they then told me is that the parents and anyone else in that stagecoach had been murdered, had gone, but she was able to escape. So now she's back on the stagecoach and she's going down the road. Now she doesn't know what's going on. The horses are just doing their thing. And this gentleman, and uh, I say gentleman, right? Because what do we do? We don't talk bad about things. This gentleman comes up, he's on a black horse, he's got a black coat, black suit, you know, white guy, he's got a black hat, and he takes a sword and he runs it along the child's neck. Doesn't cut the child. Shows the child, I own you now. And the child had a choice. I signed that contract to live, or I don't live. And that's an example of how contracts formed. Does that has anything to do, yeah, yeah. That has nothing to do with karma, that has nothing to do with your lessons necessarily. This is just baggage that's gotta be removed. No, you again, I know you're gonna give me some tough ones. Oh, give me a tough one, yeah. <laughs> okay, I believe it's, I believe that uh, what was supposed to happen in 2012 to 2013, at the beginning of 2013, at the end of 2012, for the most part, did not happen. Now, I'm not going to say anything more, but I just want to go in your own, your, in your spirit of, of your experiences, because I've had mm -hmm. many years of experiences of, of more than one extra beings of extraterrestrials. Yep. Okay, so here's what here's what I, I want you to, if you if, what, if you can get any information, because I haven't talked to anybody. Listen, so I, so I don't live, run off ego. I'm yeah. not an egotistical type person, mm -hmm. but. I'm high enough up there to see things a lot of times that nobody, other people can't see. Mm -hmm. So the male and female energies were supposed to balance, and I'm not going to see any more. Yeah. So let me, let me back, tell, back let me, then. Now, yeah. we're now, right now, we're, we're, a dec we're one decade from then. Is, is there hope for that to happen possibly? It actually did happen, but it didn't happen the way that we thought it was going to happen. So we, we expected this, you know, hey, listen, I want things are really going to get bad and that day had passed. We're talking about the 2012 Mayan calendar, correct? That's what you're referring well, I'm really to? Bringing that up. I'm bringing up both male and female energies were supposed to change to more to balance. I think we're talking to 2012 to 2013. Now that was one of the things yeah. about all that. But you know, I really believe that dark entities brought the whole thing about, you know, there'll be all these, these earthquakes and all that. You know, that wasn't supposed to be to begin with. I, I think we're talking the same thing but differently, meaning that a shift in energies, a shift in control, perhaps is what you're referring to. There was a shift, but yeah, this would be the last question, I believe. There was a shift, but it wasn't an immediate shift. It took, I want to say, seven or eight years, and I apologize. Again, I don't follow human history. I don't follow astrology. I'm absolutely intentionally tapped out of all of it, but it has happened. And when we look at the 23,000 year cycle of Earth, 2012 was when we were at the the crux of the change and now we're coming around and this is the reason that humanity is ascending again is because the shift in the position of the planets and the astrology is allowing us now to reach a higher vibration i don't know if that answered your question i can't answer it regarding the male and female energies simply that See, I, have, I have never talked to anybody that ever could answer that yeah because i i know i don't know what really happened but yet i had, I had no one to talk to about all right. I'm going to hand this back over to Sharon. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. It is that time. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, I just want to say a, a special thank you for really sharing, you know, with an open heart, like really um, uh, useful, very useful information. I know I'm doing that manifesting thing every single day. So um, first of all, I want to just let you know uh, that we do have... Uh, all, 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 all sessions are, um, personal sessions are all gone. It, they, they went right away. But I also want to mention that in between, if you wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one session, uh, that's going to be available. It'll be at our, on our website as to how to do that. That'll be forthcoming. But we do have the group healing. And uh, any level of energy that comes in to assist and help and complement is always a good thing. Uh, we do have space. Uh, it is on Saturday. It is at 6 o'clock, and the contribution for that is $75. If somebody wants to be a part of that group healing, our beautiful Catherine is over there, and she can uh, put in uh, a reservation and, and register you for that. 
So if anybody would like to do that, just go over there to the registration. And you know, push comes to shove and somebody says, oh, I want to bring somebody with me. You can, you know, we're not going to stop you at the door. But we do have space for that. Um, at this point in time, I want to say thank you again for coming. I'm very excited. This is a new adventure, you know, a, a lot of it may be, well, sounds a little strange, but I can tell you, I can only speak for myself. And another lady that came in today, that had difficulty oh. with her oxygen thing. Difficulty. And I know her well, and uh, she, we were all who were here, she walked out without having to put the oxygen in. Now, everybody's different. Let's put a disclaimer. Right? Yeah. Everybody's different. Nobody knows. I could only speak for the individual thing, but I know for myself, okay, I can stand for 12 hours. I know that where I couldn't before. So <laughs> I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Went to the med bed and it was just phenomenal for me. But everybody's journey is individual. I can only speak to myself, but for everybody, no matter what, this is an upgrade. That's all I can tell you. It's an upgrade. Evening here for a little yep. bit and uh, mm -hmm. that's it. Thank you so much. Yay. Namaste. Thank you.